In this video, we will look at phone location data from Google. It allows us to see patterns in how people move around. With this data, we can learn about how work was affected by the pandemic, the impact of holidays, when people go on vacation, and more. Google released the data to help with understanding the spread of COVID-19 in these community mobility reports, and they used their knowledge about us and our phones to measure when we're at work, at home, in parks, traveling, and so on. The data shows how movement at certain locations have changed relative to a baseline period, early 2020 before the pandemic struck. I have here produced maps and graphs to show how often people worked workplaces over the last few years. I have only included weekdays in this particular graph. The first thing to notice is that there is a large drop during the spring of 2020 as countries went into lockdown and people were encouraged to work from home. You can see it in the line trending down, reaching a bottom in April. In some places, people spent up to 70% less time at workplaces compared to before the pandemic. But the response of course varied across countries. France enforced a strict lockdown which caused travel, seen here as time spent at transit hubs such as railway stations and airports, to decrease significantly. Sweden, on the other hand, used less severe policies, and while travel did decrease, the drop was not as large. But we all knew that, and I'm sick of hearing and talking about COVID-19. And some of the most fascinating things in this data are not the COVID stuff, but what these patterns tell us about different countries. Look here, for instance, a sharp drop in time spent at work December 25, 2020. It is Christmas Day, of course. But Christmas is a Christian holiday, so it's primarily in Christian countries we see this drop. Northern Africa, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, where most countries the majority Muslim or Buddhist, are much bluer, which means that people are still working there. Here we compare the United States, Egypt and India as representatives of the three largest world religions. In the United States we can see large drops in Christmas, but many of the more notable ones are on the federal holidays Memorial Day, Labor Day and Thanksgiving, which are all secular holidays. In Egypt, we have a mixed bag, some traditional such as the Sham in Sim Spring Festival, some modern uh, such as the Armed Forces Day, the big Muslim festivals, but also the Orthodox Christian Christmas Day. In India, the big drops are found on Republic Day, the Holy Festival of Colors and the Diwali Festival of Lights. So when looking at the individual countries, we get a lot of variation in country-specific holidays, but on a global scale, the religious ones stand out as they unite a lot of countries. Looking at the top 10 days with the largest average drop in workplace activity from the previous day in the global sample, we find two related to the New Year, two related to Labor Day, two Muslim and five Christian. Two caveats are that I'm weighting all countries equally here, India weighs as much as Norway. And also, keep in mind that we're missing data on a lot of countries, so take this with a grain of salt. Another thing which I find interesting is the seasonal variation. If we look at time spent in parks and beaches and such, there is a very clear seasonal pattern for the Nordic countries. In the summer, people are out and about, while they stay at home in the winter. But if we instead look at countries on the equator, or at least those we have data for, there is virtually no seasonal variation, which is natural, since they don't have seasons of the same kind. This map shows how much time spent in parks varies over the year, red meaning more variation, and we can clearly see that it's mostly in the north that this variation is observed. Although there are similar tendencies in the very southernmost countries, Argentina and New Zealand, and in the big tourist destinations, Croatia and Greece. The final thing I want to look at is vacations. I saw a tweet joking about Europeans taking much longer vacations than Americans and we can use this data to check whether that is true. In the global sample it's not really possible to see any clear downturns in time spent at workplaces in the summer, but let's do a more focused comparison. In these three graphs I plot time spent at workplaces on workdays in EU member countries plus the UK and Switzerland, in the US and in Japan since it's also known for its work culture. It might not look super obvious, but in the EU graph there are clear dips in July and August. We can't really see that in the US, so I guess that means that the tweet had some merit to it. Japan does also not have a visible summer dip, but it should be noted that there are a lot of single day dips, which suggests that Japan has quite a lot of public holidays, so that should compensate some. That is all I wanted to talk about today. I think it gives a hint of what can be done with this type of data, and I only have the public aggregated data. Think about what companies such as Google, Facebook or Apple can learn, having access to individual level data, minute by minute, and not only the location, but also our communications, internet searches, purchases, and so on. It is both mind-boggling and scary. 
Let me know in the comments if you saw other things in the data that I did not discuss and if you enjoyed the video consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.